Hey there! <laughs> Hi, welcome to my pretend cooking show. My name is Dina Mitchell. This is my kitchen, Prego. Today we are going to make the traditional, but a vegan version of ragu or bolognese. Actually the Napolitano version, which has tomatoes. So let's kind of get started. What do we have today? First of all, we have Beyond Beef. It is my favorite plant-based meat for a few reasons. It doesn't have soy, it doesn't have a GMO, and it doesn't have gluten. And when I was looking for plant-based meats, almost all of them had soy or gluten. I gotta turn this off. And that was, that's not, that's not okay for me. I don't want any more gluten. So we're using Beyond Beef. Oh, it also has 20 grams of protein per serving. So it's pretty, it's pretty great. And then we're also using the Beyond Beef Italian sausage. Uh, Plant-based beef, plant-based plant -based meats. This happens to be made with, um, I know you may think it's like something weird or something processed, you know, it's plants. It, the protein is derived from uh, pea protein and it has, I mean, it just, if you look at the ingredients, which I can't read right now because I don't have my glasses on, they're all really great. There's, um, Google them. If you're not sure about what is in the ingredients, Google them because they're all natural. Anyhow, so our Italian sausage and our ground, our ground beyond beef. <laughs> we have our sofrito, which is two celery, one carrot, and one onion. Now, when you go to make your sofrito or mirepoix, your celery, you may have some smaller celery, so three maybe would make up two. And the same with your carrots. If your carrots are really small, I need three in order to make one. Uh, if you're curious, I believe celery weighs about 65 grams each and one regular sized carrot is around 140 grams. Just under that, I haven't weighed the onion. So we have that and then in order to make our sofrito or our mirepoix, uh, or the, I think the holy uh, trinity is what they call it, you need to dice them up uh, very fine. And we're also going to use two garlic cloves and our spices is going to be fennel, which is gonna give you like a licorice flavor. Uh, fennel actually uh, is great for a breath freshener, just FYI. Uh, and it's great in curries and uh, what else? Oh, sausage as well. I, matter of fact, I tried this great uh, Italian sausage with fennel and it was wonderful. I may be introducing you to something new. This is juniper berries. Juniper berries are, uh, well, it's what they make gin out of. How about that? The smell is, is just a little piney, citrus, fruity, and peppery. And this is great in, um, with duck and venison and pork and how about a chili? And um, it's an unusual flavor and there's a lot of uh, health benefits to it as well, including uh, arthritis, um, it's a diuretic, and, but they do say that it could be a contraceptive, so it may not be good for pregnant women. But um, yeah, so we're gonna use, I'm gonna use uh, three, six, I'm gonna use six of those in there. And then we're also going to do, I just do a little bit of thyme. We're gonna just do like half a teaspoon of that in there. We have our peeled tomatoes, and I have got those organic peeled tomatoes, salt and pepper, red wine, you guys like my choice of red wine today? <laughs> um, olive oil, of course, and this one is from uh, Bari, so it's the, the boot of Italy. And I really love these wines. Um, a wine's olive oil. And then my favorite gluten-free pasta, Romero. And this gluten-free pasta is one that I've had my friends try and they just cannot tell that it's gluten-free. And one of the best things is, it holds the structure and the texture the next day, so it makes for wonderful leftovers. So, let's get started. I have already put the mirepoix or the sofrito in a pan. And, hang on, let me put these guys in here. And I've obviously already chopped them. My berries are getting away. I'm gonna move this. Let me get these guys ready. I am 
um, just giving like a couple pounds to my garlic so I can uh, press it later. I'm just gonna get it ready. All right, so I'll move this stuff aside. I did say this is my pretend show, right? Um, so yeah, anything can happen. All right, so I put this sofrito over medium low heat with a quarter cup of olive oil. And I did that until it just becomes clear. And to give you an idea, I didn't drop that, it's in there. So that, this is all ready and this took about three or four minutes to do. Now I'm going to add our protein and this recipe exactly can be translated with uh, any ground beef you want. I believe it's 500 grams. And then Italian sausage, and traditionally this is made with uh, intestine. So anyhow, I am going to kind of break up a little bit. This is the Italian sausage. And when it comes to your, your meat substitutes, your plant-based meats, um, I wouldn't expect them to taste exactly like meat, but man, this is really, really close. Ethan Brown, the owner of this company, uh, I think he opened it in like 2009 in Southern California and then went national in like 2012. He did a great job of making it really come close to me. And I think that is kind of his goal was to make it, it, it it's, it's plants, but the flavor is just so good. Um, again, I'm gonna break this up in the pan just to make it a little bit easier. Get my hands a little messy, so I'm prepared for that. Uh, his goal was to make it taste really close to me. Uh, so, so more people will try it, so more people get on a healthier lifestyle. So I'm just breaking this up. Again, I've got it over the medium low heat. And if you're using regular meat, um, like I would use ground pork, a mix of ground pork and chicken, uh, then you wanna do it until it's no longer pink. So I'm doing that on this as well. Just kind of breaking up, this is the only real laborsome part of this is breaking it up. And I'm also gonna get my garlic ready. This one. So another thing about these meats, it's gonna come down to the aromatics and your spices and how you cook it. And you do that right, this recipe, I have given it to, I say my vegan food haters, that they just won't even give it a try. Uh, they don't want it. Uh, but I, I made both recipes, the meat version and this, and my friend Umberto could not even tell the difference. And again, it happened, I made it for a friend last night. Same thing, you really cannot tell, like the texture's great, the taste is amazing. It's just so good, especially in this recipe. So there's no harm in, if you don't have to become vegan, but maybe just eating this way, at least once a week. I mean, give it a try, eat healthier. Um, of course, Whole Foods, you know, they say is better and I do like that, but sometimes I want something hearty and this gives me that, but without that heaviness of the meat. So this is, I actually prefer this, unless I'm in Italy, I actually prefer this to the meat version. So this is almost ready. I'm gonna go ahead now and press in and this is a lot easier, by the way, than chopping if you press your garlic. A lot easier. And my other one, so I'm putting two in. And uh, I apologize if you guys are asking questions. I can't reach, but I'm happy you're here. Um, it's almost happy hour, so hopefully I'm making your, your hour sort of happy. Okay, I don't think I need this anymore. I'm gonna move this. And I'm gonna move this over so it can just apply the right amount of steam to my face. Awesome. Uh, juniper berries. So if they're really fresh, you can crush them with your, your fingers. Uh, these aren't really, and I want them kind of whole, but I'm just gonna crush them a little bit. That flavor is so unique. Alexa, timer off. She just told me I'm running over. Hmm. And uh, that means my pasta is ready. So anyhow. And then I'm going to add about a half a teaspoon of thyme. Oh gosh, should I add the fennel? 
Did I have the fan on? Can I rewind? I don't think I did. Oh man, this is so good. So I, I sometimes add too much because I really, really do love this flavor in it. So I'm gonna try not to, but basically it's about a teaspoon. And I do kind of ground it up in my hands a little bit just to kind of bring out the flavors more. And then, oh no, we're gonna add that later. Uh, then we are going to add the wine. And it's about a cup of wine. And this is gonna add, again, some really, really great flavors to this. What did you say? Her hockey something. See, I need glasses. <laughs> I don't know, I think I'm trying to be cool uh, by not wearing my glasses. Oh, plus they would steam up, so it's practical, right? So I'm actually just, I'm just waiting for the alcohol to burn off. And the alcohol smell will burn off in about three to five minutes. It doesn't take very long. And once that happens, we are going to add, I'll just go ahead and skip it. We're gonna add our peeled tomatoes and then a cup of water. So just put it in your can so that way it rinses it out and you get all those tomato flavors in there. And I do like to kind of break up the tomatoes a little bit just to make it easier. They'll break up in there anyhow, but just to kind of help it along. And this is off. And then I do add, just kind of get it started, I add a big, let's say an Italian pinch of salt. And you can do this quanta pasta as much as you'd like. And then the same in regards to pepper. Alternatively, you can add a little bit of chili pepper to this. Uh, it's pretty yummy. Now, now this is the easy part. We just find the lid up and cover it for two hours. It really is that easy. So here comes the good part. If I can do this right. Since my pasta is now done, Mm. And if you guys get these ingredients and make this recipe, and you make it for your friends, um, I dare you not to tell them that it's vegan. And see if they notice. This is so good, guys. It's really, really, really is so good. I know I'm piling it on here. But you must see without me slipping. Does that look good? Um, okay. This is the real test. Oh, one more thing. I know you guys sometimes like to have spaghetti with your ragu. Spaghetti doesn't hold on the fork with the ragu. Do you guys notice that? That's why you need a short pasta or a flat pasta, sheet pasta. All right. This might be a little hot. Mmm, guys, it's so good. There's so many flavors. The texture from the Beyond Beef and the sausage, and then it adds all those like extra little flavors. And it's burning my throat. <clears throat> Hang on, I know how to fix it. <laughs> Guys, this is so good. And look at the, look how well the pasta holds up. The texture. I mean, come on, right? Mmm, it's so good. You don't miss meat at all. Anyhow, I'm gonna post this along with the recipe and the instructions. Thank you so much for joining my pretend cooking show. And I'll see you next time. Ciao.